We all have people in our life that care for our physical and mental health, whether it be a coach or a doctor, but do we have someone in our life that cares for our soul and our spiritual impact? This past Sunday, Jason shared a message titled Rabbi in our chapter two series and the sermon series we've been having for the past three weeks. On today's podcast, we're going to talk about how you can find the rabbi, rabbi that you need in your life. And one of the things I want to mention to that is some of you are probably thinking, Rabbi, what is that? We're really going to explain, and we're going to really talk about the greatest catalyst in my life that has helped me the most as a follower of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And for those of you who have never joined us, my name is Austin Smith. I'm the youth pastor here. Uh, this is Jason Williams, the senior pastor of Foundation Church. I hope you've all had a great week. And to get more from these podcasts, just listen to the previous episodes. Uh, we're on Apple Podcasts, on our app, and the website at cometothefoundation.org. You can listen to the sermons on the app and the website. And the podcast, again, we're on Apple Podcasts and our app and also the website. We really just want to help you connect with God uh, and connect your faith with others uh, so that you can live a life of impact. We've been saying in this series, we want to help people live a life of focus and not a life of regret. And uh, that's what we hope that these podcasts do for you as you tune in and listen in wherever you are in your car, maybe at home, maybe as a family, you do this together. And uh, just, just growing in your relationship, as the Bible would say, growing in grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and that's definitely encouraged, and that's what we want you to do. So the definition of a rabbi that we used on Sunday is that a rabbi is someone who cares for your soul and spiritual impact. Jason, that's a completely different shift from what I've heard in the past, yes. okay? You know, I, I've never heard of someone just dedicated for our soul and our spiritual impact. It's always been physical, mental, whether that's a parent, family member, or a doctor, or a coach when they play sports. You know, this is something completely different, and in my opinion, carries much more weight. Yeah, and probably the closest thing that we have in American culture is a mentor. Sometimes we might call them a counselor or an advisor, and a lot of times we go to them when we have a crisis. But we're actually talking about, you know, some preventative measures, um, actually having someone to lean on. And uh, really you have, to, you have to understand the Bible in its context to really grasp the importance of the concept of a rabbi because that's not something that we're used to. A uh, rabbi is a Western culture. Now, probably for most of our, our listeners, we think Western culture Maybe, you know, for us on the eastern part of the United States, maybe for those of you like me, you might think it maybe Texas or mm -hmm. somewhere. Where, hey, let's put on our cowboy hat. Cowboy, uh, you call. That's right. <laughs> cowboy boots. And, hey, I, I enjoy doing that. But uh, we're talking about a little bit further. Uh, we're talking about a Hebraic Jewish culture, uh, the words of Jesus, as well as dating back into the Old Testament and the concept of a rabbi, which was a teacher and a disciple, which was a student or a learner. And we, we have to go to that context to truly grasp what it meant to have a rabbi. And really a rabbi was someone who devoted themselves to others. Uh, specifically in the New Testament, Jesus devoting himself to the disciples was so that they could own their own faith. They could grow in their relationship with God. And Jesus was that example. He was God in the flesh, and Jesus was addressed by the disciples as rabbi, and Jesus addressed the disciples, or he, had taught, he spoke of them as his disciples. Yeah. And uh, so there was this teacher and learner relationship that the rabbi and the disciple has. And that's not something we're just familiar with, oftentimes even comfortable with, especially in our society now where we have more ways to connect than ever before, yet we're less connected. Yeah. Uh, to open up our lives as they would in that culture, uh, literally a disciple would learn on the go. It was model-based teaching. The disciple would travel with the rabbi. They would lodge where the rabbi lodged. They would eat with the rabbi. They actually learned from the context of everyday life yeah. what the rabbi lived like, looked like, acted like, their theology. And so Jesus... In Matthew 28, God's plan for Christians to reach the world says, go make disciples. Yeah. He's asking for those who have grown and matured to get to the place where they're able to be a rabbi in somebody else's life. And, 
And we really want you to own that term and that concept and really immerse yourself in what it means because it will truly, truly help you. I, I can speak from a personal experience, Austin. Uh, David Hayes, um, who's gone on to be with the Lord, was the rabbi in my life. Yeah. And I gained an eternal friend. Uh, I gained a spiritual counselor. Um, there were times where I would seek his advice as a parent. Um, but when I first met him, I was, I was single. Um, and he just poured into me and invested in me. He would call me up and say, hey, you want to ride with me somewhere? And we would talk about the Lord. And I would ask him questions. And he would seek to answer those questions. He would pray with me. He would hold me accountable. He would encourage me. And it made the biggest impact in my life because he was caring for my soul and my spiritual impact. Yeah. I truly believe everybody needs to choose a rabbi. Yeah. And in today's culture, and when I grew up in, you know, I'm 22, so I grew up in the social media age Yes. with Snapchat and with Facebook, Instagram, you know, I see it within my youth group. You know, they're so used to communicating through that. So they don't have that one-on-one -on -one experience. Mm -hmm. They don't have yes. that time and they don't spend the time. So would you say, Austin, that just because I have a hundred day streak with somebody that's a follower of Jesus Christ, I can't claim them as my rabbi? I would say the hundred day streak with the fire symbol beside it does not signify the rabbi relationship. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point in the social media age, Austin. Yeah. I mean, you bring up a very valid point to our listeners that, that really it's more personal than that. Yep. That actually we're talking about just growing in our yep. relationship with Christ. And that takes something that's intentional. It yep. takes more than just actually having a hundred day streak with somebody For sure. or knowing them mm -hmm. and from a distance yep. that a rabbi and the disciple relationship was very personal. Yeah, super personal. And for me, when I first got saved, you know, I, this is gonna, we're going to transition to a more or less how we choose a rabbi. Yes. Yeah, I went a long time without having that. Mm -hmm. um, I had to take the time to seek it out. Yes. Um, it was when I realized that I needed more growth in my relationship. It was maybe my sophomore, junior year of high school, um, really my senior year also. I was always just kind of going through the motions, just trying to do what I can. I'm saved. I have fire insurance, as people would say around yes. here in the Bible Belt. Um, it's just one of those things I had, and I didn't have that drive. Yes. But whenever I became a senior in high school, I really had the way I had to seek it out. And the pastor I had at the time, I, I, I went and seeked him. And I was like, you know, I want to learn. I want to grow more. Yes. And he took a group and me of my friends that were also the same age in our senior year. And he took, went through books of the Bible, went through a discipleship book with us. Yes. Um, I also was a mentor under him. He was a professor at a, the Carolina College of Biblical Studies in Fayetteville. Yes. And so I did some work under him, kind of getting notes, preparing PowerPoints. And so I was discipled that way too, learning and growing. Um, but it wasn't really until last year recently that I was truly poured into, mm -hmm. truly had that discipleship and mentorship. And that was actually from you. Yes. Um, so you can, you've seen the transformation yes. that having someone there for you, there that's going to teach you, you've seen that yes. firsthand and also through your experience. Well, examples always help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and having the right examples mm -hmm. really helps. And yeah. so when scripture is very clear, and we talked about this uh, Sunday, we used a passage out of Philippians where Paul actually said, keep your eyes on those who so walk. And yeah. that's, that's learning from their pattern of living. As yeah. Paul would even say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Mm -hmm. And the, the goal of a disciple was to learn from the rabbi and put those concepts, those truths into practice. And so we even said this past Sunday that the disciple relationship is about listening, learning, and applying. The responsibility of the rabbi is to invest and to teach and to train that disciple. Uh, you know, when somebody comes to Christ, we can't assume that they know what it means to truly be a follower of Jesus Christ. If they're like me, because I wasn't raised uh, predominantly in the church, when somebody mentioned the book of Genesis, I was like, what is that? Yeah. I didn't know that was in the Bible. I was in the same boat. Yeah. And so, you know, unless you were raised in the church, and even when you've been raised in the church, when you come to Christ, the Bible refers to the fact that people are babes in the Lord. Yeah. And one thing that we know in the physical world about babes is that they need a lot of nurture, care, and support. They can't just raise themselves. Yeah. 
But God's not intended that we would do life alone. As a matter of fact, the Bible says two's better than one. Yeah. And uh, so we can apply that in the context of a husband-wife relationship, but also in a rabbi-disciple uh, relationship. Uh, there's greater strength, greater encouragement, and greater stimulation that can come from people who will devote themselves either as a disciple finding a rabbi mm -hmm. or a rabbi devoting themselves to a disciple. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's God's plan of how the world is going to be reached. It's the, we call it the law of multiplication, the process of disciple making. And I just want to I want to put a plug in here. There's a great book. Um, it's called Rediscovering Discipleship. Yeah. It's by Robbie Gallaty. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I think also we probably just need to make sure that we email this podcast to Robbie Gallaty because yeah. it would be kind of really neat if we could get Robbie Gallaty to interact with us and our listeners yeah. uh, about this whole concept of a rabbi because in his book, Rediscovering Discipleship, he yeah. unpacks the value of having a rabbi and what it was like during that Western culture to really have that. And this is really what God used in my life. So thank you, Robbie Gallaty, for writing that book, for teaching the biblical way of truly making disciples. So you may be asking yourself the question, okay, well, where do I go from here? What do I do? Um, you know, I gave the example I sought out my rabbi, so to speak. I sought it out. I wanted to find it. But sometimes you may not know where to go or who to go to. Okay, well, ask yourself the question, you know, who's faithful at following Christ that can help me yes. and that I can ask to help me, whether it be a pastor, a friend, a coworker, um, a parent, you know, you gotta seek that out. But sometimes, you know, I think in your example, it was kind of sought out yes. from the rabbi to you. That's right. You, know, you kind of were sought out yourself. So sometimes it's both ends of the spectrum, but if you're not sought out by a rabbi, you need to seek it out and you're gonna have to ask yourself those questions. Yes, I agree. And, you know, we're going to wrap this up in just a moment, um, but uh, Austin is going to share a little bit about some barriers, mm -hmm. uh, some personal barriers. We could talk about some cultural barriers, which is uh, our, you know, American culture is we're fast paced. We're always on the go. Social we're super media. busy. We're really not that personal. Mm -hmm. All these kinds of things would hinder you from actually having that investment from a rabbi. Yeah. But uh, Austin's going to share just very quickly and briefly with you about the personal struggles and barriers that could prevent you from yeah. opening up your life to having a rabbi. Yeah. Well, one of the things Jason mentioned in uh, his sermon was pride and selfishness. Well, for me, it wasn't pride to think I can, oh man, I can do this, I've got this. It was pride from a different standpoint, pride that I didn't want to look foolish, yes. pride that I didn't want to look like I didn't know what I was doing, and also selfishness to the fact that I didn't want to spend the time. I didn't want to take the time to be able to accomplish what God has for me. Um, it was more or less what I wanted to do. And I struggled with that even as I graduated high school, graduated college, and up until maybe, you know, just recently. Yes. You know, it's been taking time with the Lord to be able to seek that out and be able to battle through that. And even spending time with Jason, being able to battle through that and be able to seek God for it. You yes. know, it's taking time with him to be able to learn from him, but also applying that and being able to use that to overcome my fears and my barriers that I had. Yes. Well, you know, uh, a passage of scripture that yep. you pointed out was 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, which says, clothe yourself, all yep. of you, with humility towards one another. Mm -hmm. For God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. And yep. like you were saying, you know, to me, uh, prior to this podcast, is that word clothe means to wear, oh, yeah. you know? And really, you're, you're clothing yourself but it's having this humility of mindset, mm -hmm. actually becoming open to the fact that we we can't make it alone. God didn't intend us to make it alone, that we actually do need help, that we yeah. all struggle with sin, we've all got selfish tendencies, that we all need people, yeah. true people that are followers of Jesus Christ that can invest in us. Mm -hmm. We've got to open up our hearts. In, in, in America, we sometimes... You know, it can be in any culture, in any society, but I think sometimes we fail to realize that we do need help. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, I, I'm not as good as I think I am. Yeah. And, you know, uh, even myself as a pastor, I have people that invest in me. So yeah. we got to clothe ourselves with humility. Yeah. yeah, I know that it can be both ends of the spectrum sometimes. Maybe some people are prideful because, you know, hey, I think I could do it. Um, they, some people think they're better than they really are. But for me, it was just 
I had to realize that I can do it in the Lord, not through my own strength, but yeah. through him. It was that your was, insecurity yeah. that That's would hold you back. back. Mm-hmm. And uh, so some of you know our listeners may be battling just the insecurity yeah. and uh, maybe even the feeling, well, somebody might judge me if I say I need help. Mm-hmm. Um, we all need help. Yeah. And that's why Jesus came to be our savior. And, uh, you know, we, we really appreciate you listening today. And Austin, I know we've got a new sermon series coming up. Grab your cowboy hats. That's right. And your boots, whatever you need for cow tipping, get ready for it. Cause that's the name of the series. We're going to go cow tipping. That's right. And we're going to talk about destroying some self-made idols yep. that we all have in our life. And, and I'm going to share a personal story. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of you have never been cow tipping. Some of you wonder exactly what that is, but I'm going to talk a little bit about it in my message. But more importantly, we're going to learn how to get rid of some idols that we might create so that God is our number one focus yep. and he is the object of our worship. And they, your, your idol may be you know, selfishness. Your idol may be pride or insecurity. You know, be thinking on that this week. It's going to build off of this. It's going to build off of this sermon series we just went through. So definitely be tuned in next week. And also tune in and come in Sunday whenever whenever you make it here. That's right. Thanks for listening in. We're praying for you. Know we're here for you. Message us. If you want to learn more about having a rabbi, you can find us at cometothefoundation.org or download our Foundation Church app. Thanks for listening in.